At a weekly produce stand at a Lincoln farmer's market, Shahab Bashar helps his customers find just the right fresh ingredients. Green peppers and tomatoes, or more specialized items like pickling peppers and shishitos. Yeah, what are these big purple things? It's daikon radish. Shahab helped grow this produce as part of a nonprofit called Community Crops, designed to help people grow their own food. If you just come and look, it's here, it's a really beautiful tomato, almost ready. Shahab also works part-time at Community Crops as the Yazidi cultural liaison. So, how are we going to reserve, I mean, eggplant for the, I mean, winter? When we don't have eggplant, yeah. we use this eggplant. Providing interpreting and translation assistance, including advice on how to get the most out of Nebraska soil, which differs from the sandier soil of his homeland in northern Iraq. When you are growing stuff, eating from it, you put something from the soil inside your blood then there will be a relation between your, your soul and this land. Shahab is part of Lincoln's Yazidi refugee community, a non-Muslim ethno-religious minority, many of whom, like Shahab and his family, were forced to flee from Iraq after multiple genocides. Lincoln is home to some 3,000 Yazidis, the largest such community in the U.S. My wife, my daughter, she was two years. We are survivors for genocide. 2014 happened to Yazidis. Shahab and his family served as translators with the U.S. Army in Sinjar, Iraq, before receiving visas to come to the U.S., joining Lincoln's growing Yazidi community in 2017. With the trauma of the genocide back home and the culture shock of their new home, the family struggled to adjust. I used to run a school in Iraq, so I, I was a principal for a school. When I came to the United States, I couldn't find a job. Part of the culture shock had to do with food. Pickling people, it's like sweet people, but couldn't find in the market. The foods from the bigger stores taste like plastics. No, no taste, actually, no smell, no taste. That's when Shahab and Community Crops launched the effort to find the seeds to grow food that is culturally important to the Yazidi community. So we started growing. We, we had a little farm. We become part of this land. When Shahab isn't tending rows, he's helping other immigrants and refugees navigate some of the same struggles he and his family faced. At the Yazidi Cultural Center, I have a couple clients, we can of Kurdish from Turkey. I have clients from Syria. I have clients from Iran. I have clients from different Arabic countries. Okay, I'm, I'm Banji Barigan, yeah. We speak Arabic, we speak Kurdish, Kurmanji, and uh, we speak English. So we, we mostly help people in our community. They are struggling with the, with the English. Friend and fellow Yazidi refugee, Nawaf Haskan, was also an interpreter for the U.S. military. I used to run this place as an executive director, and, but now I'm a board member, and I constantly come here and think there are a few things that this place can do for people, for the community. Uh, one of them, you know, help them with the daily uh, stuff, you know, applying for a job, uh, you know, in the need of interpretation. 6,000 miles from Sinjar, food is key to preserving cultural traditions in his own family. Both Nawaf and his wife, Layla, are skilled chefs, cooking elaborate feasts from unwritten recipes passed out from one generation to the next. At their home in Lincoln, the camera eats first, so Nawaf can post images to his Instagram site, Yazidi Kitchen in America. I have a two, almost a two-year-old twin girls. To teach them, if we were back home in, in Sinjar, it would be easy, you know, I wouldn't teach them about all the culture because they will, everybody is practicing the same culture, but also we don't want to forget where they came from. Over aromatic plates of dolma, lamb-stuffed kutelk dumplings, 
and pickled shishito peppers. Nawaf and Shahab are not just planting seeds, they're planting a future in the U.S. with their growing families. I think through agriculture and through getting that taste of the land, taste of the soil, it's connect you to the area more than if you're not planting. Shahab says his farm and the culinary traditions it inspires only strengthens the connection of his soul to the Nebraska soil. We're feeling good when we encourage people to grow food, eat healthy, and uh, you could support your family with some foods. I, I, don't, I couldn't express even the land, when you grow food, when you eat from these foods, you love this land. Shahab likens his existence to that of a tree or a plant, part of the land here, ready to grow roots in his new home.